grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on you and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. The Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before your presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his course with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm appointed, Psalm 124, said together, If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then would we have swallowed us up alive in their anger towards us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waves have gone right over us, Blessed be the Lord, he has not given us over to the prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowl. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it's a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitum and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The 
daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and give you a nurse from the Hebrew woman, women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has gone upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your God. Your gates will always be open. By day and night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will no more be the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A song of praise. Glory, Glory to you, Lord God, God of our fathers. You are, you are worthy of praise. Glory, Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths, in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elisha, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. She did not know, and we do not know. Come to think of it, 
What do we know? What do Episcopalians know about what it is that we believe? Barbara Brown Baylor tells the story of a woman who she knew who came out of her church, a large church in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, one Sunday morning, and there was a man standing on the street, and he walked up on the sidewalk, he came over to her and he said, ma'am, you have a beautiful church. I've long admired it, but could you tell me what is it that you Episcopalians believe? And so she started to do that and realized in her horror as she opened her mouth that she was clueless as to what to say to him. Finally, he said, graciously, never mind, I'm sorry, I bothered you. It was once asked, do you Episcopals believe in the Bible? And someone said, oh no, we have the Book of Common Prayer for that. And then there's the subtle, just missing the point that goes on. On the internet, a true story, it was in a blog, I read it, and the man said, I went to an Episcopal church years ago, and the people were nice enough, and I was there about two months, and I stopped and I said to the rector one day, I said, sir, could you uh, give me a book, or could we sit down and talk about what it is that you Episcopals believe? And the rector looked at him and said, I'm glad you asked, because I think you would make an excellent usher. Next thing you know, he was on the Usher's Guild, and he served as an usher for two years. And then in a coffee hour, he was talking to someone, and he said the same thing. I'd like to learn more about my faith. I'd like to learn who Jesus is and what it means for Jesus to be my Savior. And the person looked at him a little askance and said, you know, you are just the kind of person that we need to serve on the vestry. Next thing you know, he was elected to vestry. And for the next three years, he served faithfully, after which he left the church, went to a different denomination, and years later, reflecting back, said, for the first time in this new place, I learned what it meant to be a Christian and to love and to serve and to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, how sad is that? So let's play a different scenario this morning, a gospel scenario, right out of the gospel story, and, and here it is, here it comes. You and I are walking along the path with Jesus, and it just happens to be today's gospel, and we pass a sign which announces, welcome to beautiful downtown Caesarea Philippi, when Jesus stops and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, who do men say that the Son of Man is? Peter, good old Petros, rock. Peter's different. Unlike the blockster and Taylor's lady from out front on the sidewalk and all the others, Peter is different. Peter is what we would call a chip off the old block. Now, most often this idiom, chip off the old block, refers to a son in relation to his father, a son who closely resembles his father in behavior and looks and interests and character is said to be a chip off the old block, a chip off the old father. Peter's response to Jesus' question about the Messiah's identity is so 100% right on Jesus is impressed, and he answers by telling Peter what he is made of. He says, and he does a word play on Peter's name, which means rock in two languages, Greek and Aramaic. So it's a pun on Peter's name that's going on here. In one language, and this is very interesting, in one language, rock is masculine, and in the other language, rock is feminine. And so Jesus claims that Peter and his words of faith are to become the rock on which Jesus' own following is to be built. This scattered and pitiful crowd that they are, Jesus' disciples, both men and women, which is a radical thing for an ancient culture, together will become the granite core of a community that will embody Jesus' life 
on earth. This makes Peter a chip off the old block, a piece of the rock, a son of his heavenly father. Like Jesus, who closely resembles in behavior and interests and in character. This makes us chips off the old block too, by virtue of our baptism made chips, I mean of the body of the risen Christ, who are living and loving on earth in Christ's name today. Are we not the body of Christ? Are we not Christ for the world today? If Peter is a rock upon which the church is built, then there's hope for us too. For he is one of us and yet remains as do we by virtue of baptism and God's forever offering forgiveness, one of God's chosen. Peter acts like a cornerstone sometime. Other times he's just a stumbling block on his bad days. But then don't all of us do the same? To Peter, Jesus gives them the keys of the kingdom. That is, the keys, the tools by which to provide access and entry, offer it to others as God's gift who experience Jesus as the son of the living God. And so we hear whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Jesus instructs Peter, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's a lot of power to give someone who doesn't know who he or she believes. And yet Jesus gives the same power to us as to the rest of his disciples as to Peter. Jesus gives this power to Peter perhaps because he knows, Peter knows that blessedness is less about perfectiveness than it is about willingness. That what counts is a willingness to risk, to take a chance with our faith, to work out our understanding of it and who Jesus is. And we do this by risking a little of ourselves so that trust might be built. We do this by falling down, getting it wrong, and getting up one more time and trying again, and then not being surprised when the miracle finally happens. You see, we are chips off the old block too. We have been broken like Peter, pieces of the one true rock, the rock of salvation, the very powers of death will not prevail against us. No, Peter, like us, didn't get it right always. But then again, never was Peter not privileged to receive God's forgiveness. For love is not strengthened by great talent and spectacular success, but by great need and a willingness to try and to risk. Perhaps the greatest risk for many of us is the willingness to ask for God's help, to ask for the help of another person, to ask the Christian community for help, and then being humble enough to accept that help. Humility, risk, building trust, asking for help and saying yes to God's gift when God helps. When God picks us up, saves us from drowning, forgives us denying him three times after we've said we would never do that. This is the rock upon which true understanding of faith is grounded, upon which salvation is safeguarded, and upon which our lives are based, as was Peter's and all the other disciples of his time, men and women, then and today. It's no different. We belong to Peter's flock. We are chips off the block of our old, faithful, forgiving Heavenly Father and his Son, Jesus the Christ. There is a bond in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bond 
in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you can't preach like Peter, if you can't pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages, we will say, set thee. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, Keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your mercy and love. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you have made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all, all may be one. one. For the parishioners of St. Thomas Knoxville. That God, God may comfort them on their journey, journey ahead. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. And we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine, shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, God, you have given us grace at this time, time one accord, to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.